Hello, hello, hello again, boys and girls. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, so, I was mildly startled. Uh, I'm back after Christmas, uh, and uh, as I said uh, to the guys doing a live stream because I forgot to record. If you're watching the video, uh, now I'm recording. Now, obviously, uh, I had a really nice Christmas. Uh, had had turkey for Christmas dinner with, with the old uh, with the old man, uh, and then we had a nice Yule log with some pouring cream. And then for Boxing Day, we had um, just some nibbles, you know, like the little chicken strips and uh, sort of. Uh, potato skins you know nice nice potato skin uh of course i did dip into vr but uh i found it uh that i may be slowly beginning to regret my purchase i mean there's a few games i do enjoy playing on there but there simply isn't enough games uh, on the vr to um to really justify buying i got the cheapest one which was of course the meta quest uh, and I, I did enjoy it uh, i have enjoyed using it but it's uh it's only got a few games that's the thing with the um, with the uh, VR. It just hasn't got enough games yet, and I can just about run uh, most VR games on my laptop. But uh, unfortunately, I can't record or stream it because I simply haven't got the energy. My twenty eight super can can't record and uh, do VR at the same time. Um, so sadly, no VR for you unless it's a real cheapo, easy game. You won't be able to see me fumbling around. Uh, anyway, uh, there's a few games coming out this year I wanted to take a look at. So there's uh, the new um, there's the new War one, which is called. Bah, 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 bah. Let me if I just go to my wish list. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Uh, the Great War Western Front. Of course, you've got Company of Heroes three, hopefully coming out this year. Uh, we've got the new Rogue Trader coming out, which I'll have a play. Uh, and uh, there's a new DLC that's just been recently announced by the devs of Grand Tactician, uh, The Civil War, called Whiskey and Lemons, which appears, it's just a teaser right now, but it appears that uh, you'll be playing on the Eastern campaign, uh, on the Eastern theatre, with a new career mode where you start as sort of a regimental commander and work your way up as a general, which would be very interesting. I like the idea of, of playing as like Jeb Stewart and uh, starting off as sort of a cavalry commander and slowly going up the chains to have my whole, my own cavalry corps. But uh, right now there's been after, uh, not any real games I want to come back to play. I'm not going to play Vicky 3 until they fix the multiplayer or a, a mod comes out that interests me or a new DLC comes out for that. Uh, because I've played it all now and there's not really much else I can do on that game uh, unless it was a multiplayer game. Uh, at the same time, Hearts 4, I've pretty much played that to death and I just didn't feel like playing a multiplayer game this weekend. Uh, but for... So I've been looking at my Steam library and uh, looking at the American uh, Ultimate General Civil War. I realised I did a Union campaign but didn't do a Confederate campaign. So we're going to go and play the Confederate campaign now. Uh, altogether, uh, it is a really fun game. I highly recommend it if you just want casual one-off battles. You have to do the macro management. Uh, it's a very old game. I was hoping that the devs for this would make sort of a Napoleonic version. Um, but alas, they haven't done that yet. Um, unfortunately. So, I, well, I still, they're still working on Ultima Admiral, uh, which is a pretty fun game. But I would like another game like this, but set in Europe during the Napoleonic period. So... What is this game? Uh, this game is a uh, real-time strategy uh, and you start off as a commander being guided through the smaller scale battles and then eventually fighting skirmishes and larger scale battles towards the end of the war. It's uh, a persistent campaign so if you do badly at the start, especially the confederacy, you will potentially lose uh, later on in the campaign, uh, a bit like Unity Command 2 and it covers all the historical battles. Now I did a degree on military history so uh, I did a little bit of study on the American Civil War but I am a bit rusty so I'll try and do a basic out overview of what each battle was or each main historical battle was be uh, before each battle uh, and so I'll give you a bit of context but anyway that's uh, it I believe that is all that needs to be said so without further ado let us get in. Beginning You've always dreamed of becoming a military... Oh. You alright? You're not going to be too loud for me? going to be too loud? No, it should be good. You've always dreamed of becoming a military officer like your father. You feel it's your destiny to serve your nation and the glory and honour of the battlefield. So you can either LARP or you can uh, metagame. Of course, we're going to metagame the Confederacy. So, uh, tactician... 
you have graduated from West Point, specialising in tactics, learning and reconnaissance. So Army Org means, of course, you can have a large army at the start without investing. Reconnaissance gives you a bit more information about the strength. You can pretty much ignore reconnaissance. Uh, strategist uh, gives you one training, so that means the cost of training recruits so on getting new veterans in is reduced. And Army Org, of course, is a larger size. And logistics is Army Org, Army Org and logistics being how much, ammu uh, how much ammunition each unit carries. Which uh, is a pretty useful and powerful tool, but this fellow is really what you're going to go for because that plus one army org, and plus one training is going to save you money, which you'll need in the long term. So you graduate from West Point specialising in strategy. Artillery. You served as artillery officer in a northern Mexican campaign. Your battery was positioned perfectly to anchor our defence at the Battle of Buena Vista. Logistics plus two. Medicine. Medicine means trickle back. You want high medicine to keep maintain your troops. Uh, which is a potential one we could go down. Uh, next one is, of course, reconnaissance and training infantry. You served an infantry officer at the Battle of Monterrey. Or Monterrey. You earned great distinction for your role leading the assault upon the town of cavalry. You served as cavalry officer during Scott's invasion, reconnoitring the road to Mexico City. You helped unmask and defeat Santa Ana's ambush at the Battle of Puebla. Puebla. So reconnaissance, we don't really care about. Logistics, we don't really care about. Training is pretty useful, uh, very useful. But logistics and medicine would possibly be very useful for us. So we're going to take both of these. Then, business. After the war, you went into business, making a lot of money. You also made many friends who helped keep your armies well supplied. Army. After the war, you remained in the army, rising through the ranks. You became a general of militia in your own home state. Or politics. After the war, you entered politics. Your sterling reputation and skill at managing men helped you become a United States congressman. So economy means, of course, weapons. If any captured weapons you sell, you'll make more money off, and any weapons you buy will be less expensive, which is pretty good if on a mid to late game. Uh, but politics is really what you want because it gives you a flat bonus multiplier to uh, victories in, in combat. So if I get a victory with more politics, I will get plus 20% more money or 20% more recruits than I would normally get if I fought a battle normally. <coughs> Uh, a big thing you'll find with a confederate campaign is that your manpower is going to rapidly run out towards the midpoint. I would really say around Antietam um, leading up to Gettysburg. Uh, so you really want to focus on politics early on to maintain. So confederacy, obviously, because we already did the Union campaign and I don't want to replay something and add it to my YouTube video channel, really, uh, which is a shame. Um, so the country is divided. You cannot fight your own people. So if you returned home and joined the Confederate States of America, the high spirits and spirit decor of your fellow countrymen will help you forge a powerful army and win the war. And then, of course, we can pick our difficulties. So easy mode is like normal difficulty for the Confederacy. Um, whereas uh, normal difficulty is like easy mode for the Union. Uh, Brigadier is sort of hard mode, so how difficulties go as a Union. Colonel is very, very easy. Brigadier is easy. And then Major General is hard. As the uh, Confederacy, it is medium, hard, very hard, because uh, late game your pen was a garbage. But this is not me trying to justify playing Colonel, because we'll be playing Brigadier General. But uh, if you are going to struggle, you are if you do want to see the campaign through all the way to the end as, as a Confederacy and you're not used to playing, I strongly suggest picking this bad boy. And there we go. So our income will be 7.5%, discount 2.5, veteran cost minus 2, ammo plus 10, recruitment plus 7, uh, spirit core numbers plus 1, and enemy info none. Begin. So we fight our first battle, which is our tutorial battle, uh, which is a bit poo. I don't really like this battle, but uh, hey-ho. General, your first assignment is to secure a small coastal fort at the bank of the Potomac River. <clears throat> your vanguard must hurry and eliminate the Union batteries while the fort is lightly guarded. The Federals, have, or the Federales, <laughs> have been alerted and gathering forces to block the river passage in front of you. Additionally, enemy regiments have been spotted marching along the road. Advance fast and gain ground before the fort is heavily reinforced. I your task be much harder. The rest of your troops will join you in about an hour. So with that, let's start moving the boys up. So we have our command, it will give us some flat bonuses.
And then we have our different core commanders. Well, not core commanders, but you know what I mean. Come on, man. There's my cavalry. Why have you run all the way over there? I generally don't use skirmishes in this game, even though they can be very potent if a lot high difficulties. Pushed him out of this position, which can be a bit of a nightmare. Go, 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 chase him down. And these guys have to move forward. Destroy them! Good enough. Now we take our prisoners all the way back here because they will give us more manpower. And my reinforcements, and of course we need to get our reinforcements up quickly. Can we charge this without dying? I think so. How's our condition of our troops? Not bad from being run everywhere. Okay, time to disengage before they turn around and slap us. No! Don't move into the fort. Don't move into the fort! Stop skirmishing. Don't do it, please. Please. Uh, actually, have I actually changed that back to... Yeah, one moment, boys. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, it's like, have I actually turned on the desktop audio? 
Jacob. These guys have got to run over here before they get a chance to enforce that position. They're all going to be pretty tired, but I don't, I can't afford these guys to be up here. I was hoping for a slightly more delicate approach, really. That unit's are stuck there, which is a bit of a problem. This unit, please. Really? That one kind of knocks out my infantry. Finally. Keep going forward, boys. Come on, thanks for the prisoners, but what I need. Something a tad more impressive. Don't let them run.
Go, go, go. Go to this battery now. Go on, Siegfried. Really? Oh, hang on. The fort has served up for our purposes for some time and has prevented enemy supply ships from passing this section of the river. And now the Union is on the offensive. Iron's large approach to bombard us. The Federal infantry has disembarked west of the fort and is moving to attack. We have called for help and more troops will arrive shortly to support the defence. It is advised to deploy some skirmishes along the ridge west of the fort to delay the Yankee advance. We need to buy time for our fortless batteries to counter fire and disable their armed clouds. General, hold your ground at all costs. We must prove today that the rebellion has a strong foundation. So it wants me to deploy skirmishes, but I don't really want to. Uh, you can blow up that iron club there. Now we've got to do is sit and hold. We don't actually have to destroy the iron clad, so we can just plonk ourselves here if we so choose. Now we can just plonk ourselves down and wait. And we'll see if we read onto that position. Because this guy's got less troops. He's a bit of a weakling. And there's the boys. And we got Brooke Grant, eh? Is that the Grant I think it is, or is it a different Grant? I can't really check, that's a shame. Oh, you're not very strong. Yeah, we knew they were going to charge. And that's why we put the cannons behind it. Well, our last reserves, eh? Well, hurry up. Last reserves, we sort of need your help. Okay, who's next on the charging? These guys are. Come on, boys. Run, 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 run. God, this is why you put cannons right behind your infantry. Hello, Limitless. Welcome to an old game. Played by a noob. But I play it with enthusiasm. 
Right, who are we hitting next? Uh, I don't care about this guy that much. We should be able to out trade with this poor boy. Jesus. Stop charging. Uh, may want to run away now, boys. So that's going to end very badly, very quickly. Very badly, very quickly. Yeah, that cannon just got wiped. <laughs> We're out trading, so that's fine. I can live with that. This really can't stay here. I'm going to have to move this guy further forward. Well, we can win this trade. There we are. Now we just push this guy out. Let's keep hunting him down. See if he got took a pasting. To, oh, I accept that. I accept that. Still winning that firefight, so I can live with that. Are you gonna? A lot of wounded boys. Oh wow, the table's turned on that. Move the cannons back up, move the infantry in reserve, move mildly forward to block out that next bit of nightmare fuel. Tended to withdraw this guy a little bit. Oh, my guys are wounded. Let's keep withdrawing. We'll draw them off the fort. We'll draw them from the field of battle. Oh, we'll just keep running.
Stop running. Now get a volley off. Please get a volley off. Reload. This is a slaughter. I'm telling you, this is a tutorial level as well. <laughs> like, this is a tutorial level for the Confederacy, which is literally this. You just don't have the resources to take out all these guys at once. Come on, boys. This is time to do for the glorious counter attack. Have faith, I beg you. Stop being tired. Let's keep running. Go on, fire. And fail dismally. Oh, yes. Hmm. A point blank engagement. Run into it. Route. I'd rather prefer prisoners, but a route's fine by me. Go on, get off a volley, get off a volley, get off a volley. Good. Starting to slowly break their lines. Slowly break them down. That's right, you waggle. We pushed them from the field. We've got 34 minutes left, so we can capitalize on this a little bit. Don't let them run away. Okay, we can speed up a bit now. When they're like this, they're sort of unstable, so they're not going to be as effective at fighting. There we are. One, two. Oh, 
send these guys over there. I'll send what's left of Siegfried over here to knock out these cannons. We'll aim to push them from the field. Run away! Don't let the cannons run! Let's finish these guys off. We'll have to finish these guys off if we can. And there we go. The end of the battle. What did we get? 3,200 cavalry is too much really for what we want. But then again, it's the early level and a lot of those troops aren't mine. Um, this is just the tutorial level, so it's not the end of the world. So infantry, 5,000, 3,000. Infantry, cavalry, 3,000. With an extra missing about 4,000 casualties altogether. Uh, and in terms of goals, we've achieved all our goals. In terms of goods, we were able to capture 800 Springfields and 104 Springfields M1855. So a range of 340, and this is a range of 250. So this is pretty good, but we needed more of those to really be effective. If we're honest, yay! I got a lovely, lovely medal, and I get one career point and plus three reputation, and I get 655 prisoners. Uh, well, exchange gives me 1,000 additional recruits, which we will need later on. So first thing first, we upgrade these guys to a whopping 1,500, and give these guys uh, palmettos, no, Lorenz rifles if we can. No, we can't give them Lorenzes. Uh, give them a Mississippi, uh, Mississippi then, if we can. Uh, the what is this? Okay, so that's another infantry, and this is our artillery. We can upgrade our artillery, so let's give them more ammunition. Uh, for career, let's see what when's the next battle. So here's our intel. So we get intel about what the enemy's doing, um, what bonuses they've got. So they're going to get an extra 2,500 fresh troops as a sort of elastic band. So this battle is Newport News. So what I need to do is I need to first increase my career points. So I need to go to Army Org. Uh, before we do that, actually, before we spend our points, it's always better to look at whether or not we can replace our troops. 1,500, Mississippi, I can't afford that. So what guns have I got in reserve? This is fine. And what captured guns do I have? No captured guns, this is going to cost me a pretty penny if I was to do that. But we do need more guns regardless, so... I wonder if we can go for the Napoleons instead if they're not that cheaper. Not really, but... Sir, yes, sir. Not really. I'll have to leave that 10 cannons in. Um, and then I've got a tiny bit of ammunition left, a tiny bit... A little, little bit of money left. So if I sell uh, some of my ammunition, I uh, will keep that. Skirmish weapons, artillery. <sighs> hmm. What sort of battle is this? They won't tell me until I've checked it. So if I go confed. 
I need to see what troops I can bring to that battle. Okay, so I can bring one more so I can focus on politics instead. So if I go back to the camp. And go to the battles map and then select this. So now I know I can spend my money on politics. And using that, I can now hopefully get more points for the next battle. We'll give our, our logistics train some supply as well. So we have our main historical battles denoted by, of course, the little reef. And over here we have just our skirmish battles, which we I highly recommend fighting because this will give you extra money in preparation for the larger battles. So the Union is aggressively, uh, this is Newport News, the Union is aggressively attempting to secure areas in Virginia. Their armies are occupying several towns before local militia can take up arms against them. The rebellion needs your assistance to defend a small town near Newport News. The Federals are approaching from multiple directions with superior force. You must lead a portion of your troops and the local militia to repel the intruders. And of course, if you win, you get more points. If you draw, you lose some prestige. And of course, if you lose, you're in a bad spot. So the Union is aggressively attempting to secure areas in Virginia. The armies are occupying several towns before the local militia can take up arms against them. The rebellion needs you to your assistance to defend a small town near Newport News. The Federals are approaching from multiple directions with superior forces. You must lead a portion of your troops and the local militia to repel the intruders. Which we shall do. Sir, I was very brave of you to refuse Lincoln's cold arms and join the Confederacy's cause. The Union is trying to desperately to convince the locals not to secede and is attempting to the an investment of Virginia with military forces. Numerous Union infantry is approaching from a town from three directions, northwest, north, and southeast. It is vital to protect the town and show the Yankees that we are not going to leave our lands undefended. The incoming Union forces are too strong. We cannot stop them, only delay them. So it's advised to deploy skirmishers and advance north of the town to buy time for reinforcements. Do not do what the uh, overview says. Our uh, the overview, so, so overview will sometimes mislead you. Our cavalry scouts have returned from a constant mission and will assist in your efforts. The Virginia local militia has been called up. We will receive infantry and artillery to counterattack. Until then, hold your ground, General. So I this level always withdraw into the town because you get a 100% plus cover bonus and because of these rivers here you can also do a lot of damage to the enemy via um, fighting them as they cross so as we move our troops over like so and we'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about so you can see here we have our cover uh, levels. This is how much sort of damage reduction we get depending on the train we are on. If we are, say, in a bad bit of train like the river, we will take a lot of casualties. But if we're in a sort of an urban area or in good forest, we will get uh, less damage to our troops. So you can see here, going across the river, they're extremely vulnerable. So you really want to be in a position to micro dust as the enemy is crossing the river, and you can do a lot of damage that way. Stuart's come over. Hello, Jeb. Are you Jeb Stuart? I think so. You've got revolving carbine rifles, so I like to think you are. So let's get some skirmishers. Get these guys off the horses. And move this guy into the town as well. Put our infantry units in such a way that they are dust overlooking the river. And then tell them to hold so they don't move out. Tell Stuart to come on down as well. Put our cannons right behind. And I mean right behind. What's the cover like for these guys?
tell these guys to hold and then I'll wait for the incoming attack. My cannons should be pretty good. What are these? They are smooth force. Actually, they're pretty garbage. But hey, -ho, we can't afford Napoleons yet, so that's the way it be sometimes in the Confederacy. That's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. Looks like we only have to hold for like 30 minutes, so. In game time, not real time, teehee. Where's my commander? You need to move further forward so you can provide moral support. Good going, guys. Well done. Keep up the good work. Okay, put our cannons right behind that left position, if we can. They need to make another game like this. Like, why? You can make so much money just making another game like this. That's the boys coming down the mountain. And our reinforcement should be arriving. You did your best, General, to hold back the Yankees. I don't think I did, but okay. Our reinforcements arrived to teach them a lesson. Cavalry and supporters on their way. These guys are completely disposable, so don't worry about casualties for these. Quite on the contrary, you actually should be mowing these guys down. See here, there's difference in casualties. Bit of a hard push on my left, but nothing I can't handle. We have a good reason for doing this for Siegfried. Charging is never normally a good idea. Okay, the cannons are moving in. We've more or less repulsed the enemy attack. Uh, Johnston, you can move over here. Cannons over here as well. Start firing on that position, driving back. Hi, Timey Wimey, welcome back. Long time no see. It's just got back off Christmas. Uh, I've got off, got off the Christmas holidays, so um, I'm back. It's nice to see you again. 
Uh, I did end up getting a VR headset, but um, I'm sort of regretting my purchase. Um, it's not, I don't regret it, but it's uh, a bit of a novelty, really. Uh, it's more for flight sims and that sort of thing. Uh, so there's not enough games right now to justify the purchase. But I didn't buy a big expensive one, so it's not the end of the world, you know. You know? It could have been a whole lot worse. I don't need supplies. What I need... What I need, what I want... Is more infantry. More disposable infantry. If you can give me that, I'll be a happy man. I've got enough supply anyway. Yeah, it was a really nice Christmas. I, I went back home to see my old man, my dad, my daddy, my daddy-o. Uh, and I had a really nice two weeks down there. Uh, I, What I really liked about it was just how we just didn't do anything. We went shopping initially down in, um, down in Canterbury. Uh, and after we went shopping, we then... Uh, really just batten down the hatches. Uh, I had turkey myself, uh, turkey and a yule log. So we don't really do Christmas pudding because Christmas pudding we don't really like. No, not like myself and my dad even likes Christmas pudding. So what we'll get is like a chocolate cake yule log and we'll have some pouring cream and we'll just slowly eat that throughout the week, um, which is really quite nice. Uh, and then for Boxing Day, we then decided to have some potato skins, uh, some chicken strips uh, and what was left of pigs and blankets and stuff like that. Uh, which is good, really, really good. Uh, but what I will say is after Christmas, because you have so much rich meats and that, I just wanted a takeaway. Because it's just like, oh, I, I, you have gammon. So we, of course, for um, Boxing Day, you have gammon for Boxing Day, uh, which, is, which is really nice, really juicy, succulent meat. You can eat it cold. And you also have the cold turkey. But do you have all these rich meats? You just don't know what to eat afterwards because you've already had all, the, all pretty much every sort of meat uh, leading up to it. And so in the end, I was like, please, just give me something. Just give me some fast food. And in the end, it was like, we, we had to eat some fast food. We had to get a takeaway. We got fish and chips in the end towards, uh, like, the 1st of Jan. Uh, we didn't go out for New Year's Eve, though. We didn't bother going out for New Year's Eve. Um, because the weather was too bad. The weather was just, really, like, there was no point going out. I understand why, but if you're younger, you want to go out to, like, the nightclubs and that for New Year's Eve. But I'll be brutally honest with you. The weather was awful, so why would you want to go out? So we went out the day afterwards. But, uh, yeah. We went out the day afterwards. Uh, we went down to... and to uh, There's a restaurant chain in the UK called Cope Vasserie, where you can uh, have a sort of a French-style uh, menu. So I had some mussels and uh, a nice chocolate fondant cake, which was lovely. Which was really nice. Uh, but since then, uh, um, I've been slumming it again, back to having a normal food. I quite like gammon as well, but the trick with gammon is not to salt it, mind you. If you have, uh, th th sometimes I'll, I'll forget, I think, I'll just, cause I'm not, I normally add a bit of salt, but because uh, but gammon's so salty, it can be a bit uh, a bit overwhelming. But gammon's a nice uh, a nice breakup from turkey, and I do like a bit of, uh, a bit of gammon. My probably least favourite meat would have to be lamb because it's too fatty. Lamb's too fatty. I could do a lamb kebab, but I really like the, the flavour of lamb, but I just don't like the fat. I like to cut the fat off my meat. So, of course, I use the, the, the fat to flavour it, but after you flavoured it, you didn't cut off the fat. And you're like, OK, let's leave it to one side. That's what I, no that's what I normally do for steaks, for um, if I can get away with it, for uh, pork. Uh, and for lamb, I'll try and cut out the fatty bits. But if you have a lamb chop, nearly 80% of a lamb chop is fat. So I really do not like lamb chop. I can probably get away with a lamb shoulder. That's nice, nice little lamb shoulder. But otherwise, not my cup of tea. But gammon's you go to. Gammon's you go to. Because that just lasts and lasts as well. You can just eat gammon for days. Good value for money as well. Gammon's pretty, pretty a cheaper, cheap fellow to, to eat.
Okay, please fire. Please fire, please fire, please fire, please fire, please fire. Hmm, eh, eh. But, how was your Christmas? That's what matters. How was everyone's Christmas? Mine wasn't too bad. Uh, hopefully yours wasn't too bad. I mean, it's been quite a mild Christmas in the UK. Not a lot, not not too bad um, in terms of, of weather. It's just been very rainy. We haven't had a cold snap yet. Uh, so luckily no one's really been feeling the bite of the winter yet. Uh, but I think most of our weather now is sort of Jan January, Fe no, January, February, March time now. Our weather's sort of pushed to the right now. It's no longer uh, December, November time as a sort of a, as, as a cold snap for us. So, but, uh, did anyone get anything nice uh, apart from my VR goggles? I got Resident Evil 4 for the VR, which was good, but um, it gives you a headache. I'll be honest with you, like you get really bad. I get really bad motion sickness using it, so um, I have to use a teleport function. Like it's it is fun, it is novel, but you need the space to use it and stuff like that. Anyway, this was a pretty easy uh, easy fight, as you can probably see. Eight thousand infantry to their five thousand. My nine hundred casualties to their 5,000 and that's the sort of casualties you want for the confederate campaign because towards the end of the campaign you're not going to be getting any more manpower and uh, you're just conserving what you have left so this is the sort of casualties we like uh, goods did we capture anything valuable victoire glory victoire they need to do a napoleonic war version of this game just if you announced it i would pay money for it just like i'd pay money for the idea of it come on now but they're doing um, Grand Tentation American Civil War is doing a new DLC that's going to come out where you can play as a regimental commander and build your way up on the Eastern Theatre. So I'll be getting that when that comes out. Uh, what do we get? Springfield, no one cares about that. Last phase of GCSEs. Oh, but that's like, so when's the GCSE test? I've got, like, I've got to think back when I was a kid. Um, I think that was oh, March time, isn't it? March time, March. June, May, June, May, June. Was oh, that the summer holidays? I can't remember. It's like June. Ah, Reggie, Reggie. That's not too bad then. You've got plenty of time to revise. See what I did it back. At, well, back when we were uh, doing my day, back in the day, like what? When did I do my GCSEs? When did you, you do it? When you're like twelve, don't you? So what? Twenty-seven now. But back in my day, about 15 years ago, 15 long, painful years ago, um, you, if you were in the higher sets, you could do some GCSEs early. So if you were like set one maths or set one English, you could do your English literature early and then you'd do the normal English, uh, English GCSE um, the year after. And you could do the same as maths. You did the maths GCSE early. And then, so you could do the foundation maths GCSE, which would give you like a basic C. And then if you got that, then of course you could apply. Well, then you could, then you'd move on to do the more demanding maths test that could get you a B and an A. But of course, they've changed it all now. I've changed it all now, so it's now levels. It's like zero, one, two, all that crap. I prefer the much simpler system of A, B, C because you pretty much know where you stand with an A, B, C rather than one, two, three, five. Like, is five a good thing or five a bad thing? I don't fucking know. <gasps> Like, oh, he's a five. Well, do you mean like five on a Victor scale or five on, uh, you know, wealth scale? So, it's all, it's all like pass. Because how it was, how it was before is A star was really good. Like, A star was your top marks in GCSE. Then you had your A, which was still pretty high, but A star was like a 90%. A was your pretty much like your 80 B was your sort of 70 bracket, C your 60 bracket, and then of course your D's, E's and F's were sort of the E eh level. So you, if you got a D, you were sort of below where C was your average. But now 1 to 9 is like very confusing. So what, A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, D is 4. E is 5, F is 6. Yeah, it's bizarre. They've probably done that on purpose to confuse people. Still, you're feeling confident? I would feel confident if you do, if you if, if you like military history, uh, if you like history full stop, generally speaking, if you're doing your GCSEs, you know uh, you're going to be okay. But I was really bad at my maths. Maths is where my weak, weak point was. 
maths I was not good at all. So let's look at our camp. So we can increase army org. Oh yeah, they've changed it now. Um, so it's based on how many people need to get. It's it's now your 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 grade is no longer based on a percentage, but based based on the on the national percentage. So if everyone does really badly in that GCSE, like GCSE English, then the A grade is brought down. So the average twenty percent can get that A grade or something like that. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Of course, if you were um, doing the Wu flu, if you got a uh, you, 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 it was really good for your GCSEs and your A-levels back then because, of course, you were marked by your teachers. I mean, God, I was a kiss-off back in school. You know, I was uh, I was the uh, Casanova of cringe uh, back then. Uh, and so I would have done very well <laughs> if, if the teachers gave you your mark, but uh, sadly not anymore. Let's go with training. Oh, crap. I need to load that. I made a mistake. The Casanova of cringe. What time is it? Okay, this was the latest save. Yep. I don't want to redo that level. Okay. I would need army org. Why do I need army org? For this level here. So, bring this back up to 1,500. A way to game the, the, the game, so to speak, is if you keep around at 1,500 bracket, then you can normally reduce the elasticity of the AI's troop count. Another 1,500 here. Uh, should we go with cavalry? Probably not. I'm not particularly interested in cavalry uh, just yet. Although I would like cavalry. No, no, Marley. You're too bad at micro for cavalry. Hmm. Mississippis have a range of 300, but Lorenzes I can't, don't even have enough of, so it'll have to be the Mississippis. The Mississippis, have we got a little speech on it? The first US rifle must get using percussion lock system, still considered a reliable weapon. Uh, no, no, sadly not. So cavalry is very good at charging. Uh, no, so cavalry in this game is very good at counter charging. So if your infantry gets charged and you counter charge, it does a load of damage. It's really good at damaging cannons, uh, capturing supplies and taking out um, skirmishers and routing troops. But what's really bad at is infantry, um, if it's fighting, if it gets shot at. Basically, if anything shoots at it, it dies. So you need to, uh, it, all it takes is one, one uh, regiment to turn around and open fire, and you are, and your cavalry is just annihilated. And so it needs a lot of micro of cavalry because you need to maneuver around to attack at the exact right time and be micro that cavalry all the way around the battle to avoid it running into infantry or getting over cannon or anything like that. Uh, and your skirmishers are your glass cannons. They can get the best weapons, but again, they take a lot of micro and they need to be a, at a certain higher veterancy before they, you really start seeing the um, the fruits of your labour with those bad boys. Uh, okay, can I get the Napoleons now? I like Napoleons because they have a devastating short-range fire. Yes, sir. And that means shotgunning. And Napoleon's are great for shotgunning, so one tactic I like to use in this game is slowly move the infantry up, move the Napoleons up right behind the infantry, and use the Napoleons to point blank shotgun enemy positions. <laughs> and if you get counter charged, then the shotguns open up. And but the skirmishers are good, but they're vulnerable to cavalry and they're vulnerable to uh, being out in the open, and they're very micro intensive. Uh, I don't really care about any of these, so we'll continue on the game. So, time for a history lesson in a second, once I click the start campaign. So, what bonuses have we got? Because we won that previous battle, we have get minus 5% to enemy army size. And the Confederate army of PJT Beauregard has deployed south of Bull Run River to guard the Manassas Railroad Junction. From the other side of the river, Brigadier General Irvin McDowell is looking for a weak point to attack. Your forces are needed to guard the left flank of the Confederate army and stop the enemy from advancing to Richmond. So, history lesson. From what I remember from all those years ago, back when I did 
military history as a degree. So several miles east, the Confederate Army of PJT Beauregard has deployed along the Bull Run River to guard Manassas Railroad Junction. From the other side, Brigadier General Irwin McDowell is leading the Union Army and is looking for a weak point to attack. The Confederate Army is stretched out to defend all possible river passages. You are un but you are to the command left flank, which is likely to become the main target of the Union Army. The utmost side of your defensive line ends at the stone bridge. The Federals may assault this point head-on or manoeuvre from the western fort. If the Union attempts to attack your position, you will receive reinforcements from Beauregard and from Joseph E. Johnston, Army of the Shenandoah, who will soon to arrive by train. So this was the first big battle of the American Civil War, and it was really the battle that both sides sort of chalked up to be a victory, uh, but honestly, it was just demonstrated the sheer uh, amateur and amateurness of uh, both sides because both of these guys were conscripts uh, or volunteers, and neither side really knew modern warfare. Uh, of course, the Union were quite confident of uh, victory here because, of course, it was a Union. They had, uh, of course, more equipment and better supplies. Uh, but the big problem was uh, this general inexperience with this kind of warfare. Uh, and the Confederacy, although they had uh, more, they were more stretched out because they had a rear railroad, railroad line, they could quickly move reinforcements into this battle. Uh, quite amusingly in this battle, you had um, civilians, think, I think from Washington, who came down to watch the battle and they had got out of their picnic basket and came to watch it. And it appeared to go very well initially for the Union. They broke across the river, they had turned the flank of the, of the Confederacy and they were quickly moving forward and the Confederacy was rapidly retreating and things were looking really bad. And then you have this sort of historic moment where the Confederate troops are moving up Oh, what's the hill called? Uh, well, this famous hill we see in the battle. Uh, and they look over and they see Stonewall Jackson with his group of troops uh, and just standing there with because uh, he had just moved up via the railroad line and come in to reinforce. And from that position, they were able to hold. And thanks to Stonewall Jackson holding that position and re reinforcements coming up, the Confederacy was able to counterattack and the Union, now disorganized from the initial push, collapsed back into a route back towards Washington. Uh, which was quite amusing because, of course, while they were all running back to Washington, all the civilians were sort of stuck trying to run back as well, and the bridges and the roads were all jammed up. Um, but it was quite an iconic battle because, although technically neither side really achieved anything decisive, the, Conf the Confederacy just held and, uh, and moved off later on, uh, and the Union didn't really lose any territory, and the casualties were pretty even. It was just if the battle had gone perhaps the other way and it had been a decisive Union victory, maybe the Confederacy would have perhaps put their hands up and just accepted defeat. But because of that victory, of course, it meant all this sort of stalemate. The war continued. Now, of course, we can't really do what about isms about warfare and, and about history. We don't know what could have been if the Union achieved a decisive victory here. But what you need to know really from this battle is it was a stalemate with initial Union successes followed by Confederate counterattack, which led to this draw, which both sides tried to play off as a victory and a defeat, uh, but really it was more a Confederate victory than a, than a Union one, because the Union was forced to mass withdraw and re retreat off this territory. Uh, but in terms of numbers, games and damage done, it was pretty even. Um, and it was just a sort of the demonstration to both sides just how much needed to be done to train up a fighting force for this war. The Union would go away and start building up. I forgot the guy's name, uh, McClellan. He would, of course, take over the army and begin mo uh, training it up, uh, preparing it for the Peninsula Campaign. Uh, and, of course, the uh, Confederacy would, of course, realise that perhaps they need to increase uh, conscription and, of course, begin training themselves. Um, it's a very interesting battle, uh, and it's uh, really just an amateur battle where both sides are new to the experience, and it leads to that sort of chaotic battle, which of course, as, as the war progresses, you're going to see a bit more of a development from the basic concepts of this war, which of course was the supremacy of the defensive and the increase of technology in terms of mini ball muskets and ridiculous ranges of muskets and how much damage they could do. Um, meaning that the offensive of the old Napoleonic, Napoleonic era was sort of 
gone and now you're going to go towards this sort of more siege and attritional warfare that would sort of be an indicator for the first world war but the european powers sort of ignored it because they thought it was amateurs doing warfare and especially at this stage it was sort of amateurs doing warfare um but the lessons learned in the, in the american civil war especially in the midpoint uh, and across towards cold harbor would be lessons that if the European powers had learned, perhaps would have avoided the massive casualties of the uh, First World War. Anyway, it's a great it's a great example of technology and how technology changes tactics and doctrine, and uh, how people always tend to bring the hist uh, the lessons of the previous wars, such as Napoleonic wars, to new wars or modern warfare, which is now divorced from the technological demands of of of, of, of the present. Um, which is which is very good. Anyway, we pl play as a nobody, just defending the right bridge. We will get more reinforcements, but this is just the start and development of the battle. So, our main forces are deployed a few miles east of this location, guarding the Manassas Railroad Junction. Bull Run River is the natural barrier between our lines and the Union Army on the other side. To protect the left flank of the river, we need to guard all the fords. Our forces stretch thin along the Bull Run River. We do not have sufficient regiments to guard this passage, but you need to be alert for any enemy movement. Thou may attempt to cross with a possession of his army from here. The small hill near Matthew Farms is a good position to create a defensive line in case the enemy pheasants are left. Sometimes the uh, text in this game will try and make you the historical decision, which is normally not the right decision, especially if you if if the battle was a, was a loss. Uh, Henry Hill, that says. Henry Hill is another strong position for our artillery and must be secured. Your orders are to defend your position and scout for enemy movements. If the Federals attack you, reinforcements will be dispatched from the southeast. So, Federal forces have been spotted on the other side of the river and will certainly try to cross it. Take position on the hill and stop any attempt of the enemy infantry to cross. Pay attention to this forward. Yes, 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 yes. I, have a, I know I've played this game so many times. Yep, yeah, you get the general idea. They're going to attack from all sides. It's going to be a bit shit for you early on. Try not to die. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> let me summarize this battle. So here we are. We got our three divisions. We have one division moving up north. Our cannons, of, of course, are set up here, and two infantry divisions to hold the river. Then we'll have our cannons and mild lead to hold this position, and the intent will be to withdraw as soon as we are able to. So we get our scouts. We have our scouts into here. Move these bad boys up. Yeah, I can imagine the brief now. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm in the commander's tent and, and the commander's like doing the brief and he's saying, look, here's the only positions there, but here's where they might come from. It's like, all oh, right, yeah, they're coming fucking everywhere. Just don't die. Don't worry about it. Um, worst case scenario, we'll save scum. I'm too busy dribbling and the commander's just like crying. Well, Beauregard has got his head in his hands. It's like, why have we put this guy on, on the left flank? Why have we done this? This was not a good idea. Then we move our cannons as close up as possible. And we do not cross. That was a bad idea. We are setting up here. Right here. Get some skirmishers. Moving them forward. And what we got? The first Ohio is on their way. And a load of cannons. They're going to charge. Spoilers, it ain't going to go well. 
Charge, 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 charge. Oh crap, they're, they're actually breaking the cross. <laughs> stop, 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 stop charging, stop charging. There we go. And that more or less concludes the first 30 minutes of this battle. Oh, I love it when I get 210 kills to 4 deaths. This is a very micro-intensive game, but it is rewarding once you do. Uh, counter cannon fire. I mean, I probably am not not really gonna be able to knock that cannon out. Yeah, they retreated. I can never that. Switch to five speed. You charging? You charging? You charging? You gonna charge? You gonna charge? Yes. Round two of watching numbers go down, Boogaloo. Hmm. It feels good. Uh, what's on our left? Oh crap. Now things slowly start going wrong. Time to save scum. Now you could do the intelligent, you could do what the game wants and hold this position if you were an idiot. But if you were intelligent, you do not do that and you immediately run over here. You run over here. So how the AI tends to work in this game, if it has number superiority, it will try and sledgehammer until it gets to a point where it no longer feels like it can push across, like now, it'll just sort of hold there and start sniping. Um, the problem is, early, early on, when you're doing defensive, you can get away with, sort of, if you know the game, having the right amount of troops for the battle, but, uh, and the battle can go over one of two ways. Either it ends up going like this, where you're pretty confident, or it ends up being a cluster smash, and you just get smashed to pieces, and your army just ends up being worn down by the massive troops of infantry. And then, of course, once you do get hit in this battle, in the next battle, you can't make up the losses, especially as the Confederacy. And so it's really about microwing the hell out of the game. Of course, this is the first big battle, so you're not really expected. It's not going to be that challenging for you, especially the Confederacy. A lot of the early Confederate levels are defensive, and so you can get away with... You can have a pretty fun time. Um, but it starts off offensively with like the Peninsula campaign and it goes back to defensively for the midpoint for the uh, Confederacy and then the late game ends up being like suicidal offensives which is not a good not a good not a good shout. Pretty painful actually. Then go back to uh, mega speed. So what we're going to do is get our troops into as much cover as possible, move our cannons like right behind it. Get Beauregard just to chill out here. Hi Beauregard. And now we're going to see the Union Army on mass start rolling down that hill in absolute pain and suffering. But as long as we hold this side, we should be okay to contain them. They are starting to move troops over in the north. Oh, I'm not too worried. My big concern is that left flank, because over here is the pain train.
However, if I can keep the Union off this area, that means I don't have to worry too much about the impen um, about getting encircled. No one cares about Matthews Hill. You'd have to be a poo head to care about that. No, sadly not. Um, sadly no sappers units. I was going to hold Henry Hill, that's fine. So this is what I'm talking about. The excessive numbers of Union troops. Eventually they will pummel you unless you've got good organisation and they will wear you down. But over here, in that fog of war, is the sort of main chunk of Union troops. But I'm not too worried as long as I can contain them. If I can contain your right flank, then I don't care. But this is not as strong as you would think because there's only skirmishes here. Good. So now they're going to wear down mode. Well, they'll try and wear me down, but because I've gamed it just enough to have just enough range, they can't fire at me, but I can fire at them. Using my too much game knowledge of this game, I'm, I've gamed it so they, they have to shoot me over here or crossing the bridge, and the AI is not going to do that. Now, you may be thinking, well, this is not a very fun experience, and this is not particularly riveting. What I will say is that like, you need to do this to the Confederacy, otherwise you're going to be on the pain train and you're not going to see the end of the campaign. Especially when you get to Chancellorsville. Chancellorsville is supposed to be the great victory for the Confederacy, Normal, but actually it's you getting slapped. Or you losing half your army at Chancellorsville. Come on, come on, come on. Give me another volley, give me another volley, give me another volley. Thank you. Please. Blessed be. I love defense. Defensive, I look, like, that's what I really like about cold arms. Cold arms, gates of hell, defensive levels. Because you can actually sit back and enjoy the fighting and what's going on. Like, I can sit back and enjoy what's going on. I don't have to be going from left part of the map to right part of the map. Defensive levels are the best. General, seems the enemy outnumbered us. We must retreat and reorganize our forces. I already know this. Henry Hall is a good place to form our defensive line. General Jackson's moving forward. So this is the historical moment where General Jackson comes to save us. What this means is everyone runs over here. Like literally everyone runs. So this is supposed to be the moment where things are looking their bleakest for the Confederacy. Of course it's not looking like this in my game. It's looking rather embarrassing for the Union. Like, we need help. Why? The Union keep... We're running out of ammunition, that's why. It's not we're being overrun. We're running out of ammunition. We're mowing them down. Quickly, bring up the fuel stores. Where is that Union left flank? They haven't been pushing forward. That's a supply train, that's some skirmishes there, but again, things I do not care about. There they are, there's my lurking Union Regiments of Doom. So this battle can go one of two ways. It can go very, very badly. Where you get pushed off to the right, you get pushed off to the left, and you end up doing this disgusting blob. Or it can go very, very well, where you just have to fight one battle on the left. In this case, it went very, very well. Come 
so you, you can see how bad this battle could have gotten if I'd been pushed off this side, if I hadn't built my armies properly. Because they've got 2,000 troops to my 1,000 on the left. Come on, Jackson, save the day. Stonewall me, daddy. That's what they all say, is that correct? That's the historical um, quote they use at the Battle of Bull's Run. No joke, that's what um, General Jackson said. Quote that in your uh, university dissertation, I dare you. What guns is this? Ah, carbines. Yeah, I can use you for skirmishing. So this is where you can use these guys for skirmishing. Yeah, exactly what Stonewall Jackson said. It's... <laughs> the wall is sus. McDowell is venting. That is... Um, they're going to adapt the history books for the Zoomers. No cap, hold Henry Hill, my dude. This front, <laughs> yeah, this line is straight bussing, said General Lee when he tried to take Gettysburg, tried to take um, Cemetery Hill. So this is the uh, reenactment of uh, when Jackson holds that left flank and pretty much saves the Confederate army. If uh, Jackson hadn't done this, then of course that entire front would have collapsed and the Confederate city would have had to run. But because he did, he was able to save the Confederacy on this front. And then of course more reinforcements came forward. Of course Jackson would eventually become I think a core commander for Lee. Uh, and he would perform admirably. I think he also did the Shenandoah campaign where he just literally trolled the, U the Union, lived rent for lip free in the Union Union mine for like a, a month or so. I'd rather you fire on this guy, if I'm honest. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. We're not doing that, Mr. Cav. <laughs> I know what you're doing. We aren't doing that. This is a case of slowly wearing down the more significant Union troops. Because these aren't our troops as well, we can just discard them as well and just throw them into the battle. Run away! Run away! Run away! You, if you invest a lot of money into your logistics and it gets taken, you lose all that money. So if I invest like 50 grand into my logistics train and then it gets taken by the cab, I lose about 50 grand. So that's why I'm very, very careful of my, uh, my wagons of doom. Are you mass charging? Oh wow, you are. We're not doing this. Hold, 
hold, hold. Ah, oh, I love it when I see the cannons fire. How many casualties have you taken? Not enough to worry me too much. I've had enough. Move down the brigades on the left. I could, you're right. We are relocating some divisions. Aye aye, commander. You are correct, that was the correct thing to do. I can't cancel, I can't cancel. Okay, now I can move forward. And that's dealt with the cavalry, so I no longer have to worry about you guys so much. How is the ammunition achievable? Nice. I'm looking forward to that new uh, DLC for um, Command Tactician. I hope it's a bit more of a, more of a narrow sort of a campaign. It'll be really fun. I haven't played it in a while because it's quite a dense game now. I have to relearn it because it's added a lot of new features. This is good. This You can see how the battle completely changes from what would be a nightmare if they'd crossed the bridge to the at easily manageable level because if they break through here then that's what two three four stacks of uh of infantry just throwing themselves down here and forcing the, the change of the flank uh, are you insane are you, are you li literally insane what are you trying to do here Run! Cavalry, run! Good thing you're crap! <laughs> yeah, that's a great... I love it. Hopefully they're stuck as well. We're getting a bit of lag, are we? Alright, time to go to turbo mode. One moment. Switching to turbo mode, no one wants lag. Give me a second while I switch to turbo mode. Well, oh, actually, performance mode. There we are. Should be better now. Less lag. Less FPS drop. A lot of the levels, as well as is knowing the historical what historically what happens, and then using that to your advantage in this game, which I quite like. It you actually get a buff for knowing about the battles. And you're actually at a disadvantage if you don't, because the game will trick you into doing something very stupid. Like trying to hold up here. That would be very stupid if... <laughs> that would not be an intelligent thing to do. Okay, they're bringing that round. I need to retreat this. Cavalry. I'm going to keep these skirmishes here just in case. Just in case. But saying that the AI is quite clever at changing up their tactics once in a while. I mean, they are scripted to do certain things, but I've seen the AI sometimes mass over to the north. It does really depend on, on a lot of little factors that can change the way each battle plays out. Uh, run away. Run away. This poor old Burnside, just let Burnside do a mini Fredericksburg.
no. So how you get uh, prisoners of war will depend on your troop placement. So normally, if you destroy a certain amount, like and and there's no way for the infantry to, to retreat, they will surrender. So you need to have like a, a little infantry unit here, a little infantry unit here, a little infantry unit here, and then they will surrender if, if they take too much damage. But it's quite hard to get POWs, and it's not really worth it a lot of the time either. That's just a shame. Apart from the equipment, but then again, on the lower levels, it's not that bad. So, this is a stage where we get some reinforcements. Johnson's coming up with the big boys. General, the Union is really weakened now, and we can counterattack with our fresh reinforcements that will arrive shortly. Concentrate the attack on their right flank and drive them back to Washington. So, we take what's left of these boys and we move them all the way to our left. So, for me, this is a pretty easy battle. Uh, sometimes it can be rather difficult for me, this battle. Uh, it, it normally ends up being a brutal frontal assault over on top of Henry Hill. Um, but this battle is actually rather easy for me, which is nice. It makes a nice change from normally. Mm -hmm. That's the way... I can't wait to see the casualty figures. Again, that's a, a stalk of quote from uh, Robert Ely. The Peninsula campaign. Actually, it wasn't because actually normally casualties are pretty even, Stephen. So <laughs> very few, few times did uh, the Confederacy get good KDR, which you could argue is one of the reasons why they lost as well. The fact that they lost. They, they lost troops they couldn't afford to replace where the Union could. We can switch to max speed now. This is just maximising the damage we can do. I'm going to see if I can get a flanking action. Oh. oh wow, you've actually sent troops up this way. Cheeky little flanking action. How's that working out on the right? Yeah, we're good. Yeah, so these uh, troops are free spawn, so I've got no control over um, what size they come as. So all these troops on the right are mine, which I've control of, but in the early stages of the war, um, I will have free spawns, and it won't be until later on do I have massive armies. So in the case of this, all of these troops are freely given to me and aren't persistent, so I could, if I wanted to, just brutally throw them at the enemy uh, with no cost to myself. Uh, but um, it's not normally a good idea, uh, but yeah, I can see what you mean. So what I generally use is I go up to 1,500 troop size because that's the sweet spot for mo uh, to game the AI. If you go any higher than that size, then the AI will elastic band to have like double the troop numbers, whereas 1,500 gives you uh, flexibility and versatility as well as being a bit gamey as well. But as a confederacy, you do need to be a bit gamey because it... It's very, very difficult. It's a very difficult, um, a very difficult campaign. Unlike the Union campaign, which starts off quite difficult and gets disgustingly easy, and it just becomes a frontal slog. Um, I believe these guys here. Go, 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 go! I want encirclements. Push, push it. Oh no, they retreated too quickly. Shame. That's a shame. Tell these guys to halt. I have no need. I haven't got a need for this anymore. 
Uh, can we push over here? Yes, we can. Good. Right flank. How's that going? Pretty well. Left flank. How's that going? Pretty well. Although they've now moved into pretty solid defensive lines. Did I get a POW? Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, my troops are too tired to charge as well. Tends to be the case. Uh, Alright, new plan. Mass assault. A general advance across the line. Apart from you, you you've got to charge. <laughs> you got to charge those cannons. <laughs> like you can't do a general assault across that line. You got to charge the cannons, or you, you are dead. And retreat, retreat, retreat before you die. Please, retreat, retreat, retreat before you die. Oh, what the hell? What are you doing? What are you doing up here? Get off my hill. I better be not. I better not be hard to actually take. Nah, it's a skirmishers. You can go stand on that to keep them away. His bars has become a slog. Get off my hill, get off my hill. Uh, I actually really want to engage you too badly. Come on, you guys should be casualties. You guys should have surrendered by now. I'm not going to chase you. Can I chase them across the map without losing too many casualties? Yes, I can. Nice. Fire! You got nowhere to run. I have the high ground. Fine route. Alright, next step will be to counter our oh god. I'm gonna move these troops up here first. Uh, cavalry, 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 where are you? Where'd I put you? 
There you are. Oh, look, it's these assholes again. Try and take that position. I can't. This it's gonna be too painful. We'll take it, but it's gonna be costly. I can't. Nice. So we can finish the battle, and now normally I'd recommend continually fighting the battle. Um, because you want to wear the enemy out as much as you can. So I'm going to finish these guys off. Once these guys are finished, I will move on to the next battle. Because I want to polish these guys off before. And because these aren't my troops as well, I don't really care. Well, there's only a few troops left here. I can move around them. But ammo has now become a problem. Nice and close. How do we get some? Yeah, you've got some plies. That's nice. That's always nice. Let's push them from the map. The final mop up before the next battle. You may be thinking, is this worth it? And the answer is yes, it is worth it because you don't want these troops coming back for the next battle. And it gives you guns and it can give you prisoners, so it is definitely worth it to actually mop up what's left. And we are good. So, in this battle, conclusion, 20,750 men on the Union, 15,579 for the Confederacy, 31 guns for us, 51 guns for them. We've got the whole gang of myself, Mr. Jackson, Beauregard and Johnston against McDowell, 
and the casualties for the infantry for the Union was 14,574 to our 3,445. We lost 9 guns to their 14, that we lost 5 cavalry to their 412, and they have 40 missing persons. So that is about so 10% of 20,000 is 2,000, 50% is 10,000. Uh, about 75% of the army is poo pooed, which is good. It means we keep cutting them down like weeds so they don't uh, rise up. At the same time, we've got a lot of boys who've been promoted, but nothing we have to worry about apart from Wade Hampton, who has died. And the goods we have gotten is 1,581 normal Springfields. Uh, actually, 3,500 normal Springfields, 145 Sharps rifles, 110 Colt, and 3,635 captured supplies. So, War Service Medal. We have got Thomas Jackson as a Corps Commander, uh, plus one Army Organization, 40 Prisoners, and the War Medal Service. Uh, we also have an upgrade to our infantry, which we can apply, so we can either give them plus 10 stamina, plus 5 efficiency, and plus 10 speed, or we can give them plus 10 morale and plus 5 efficiency. I think I'm going to give them endurance, because I always like my guys to be a little bit faster in the battles. Uh, at the same time, what is the enemy intelligence like? They're going to give them 19,700 more troops. Okay. Okay. And the Battle of Shenandoah. So I need to save that to see what troops I can bring to the Battle of Shenandoah. So I can see what troops I have to build. So I can bring a whopping 20 divisions or 20 brigades, not 20 divisions. Yeah, 20 brigades. So let's go back to camp. And we need to build a 20 brigade army. And how many battles have we got? We've got two battles. So how many troops can I add? Infantry 500. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. Okay. Mississippi. Mississippi. Uh, I need a Mississippi, actually. Uh, Mississippi. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Give me a load of these. Give me a load of Napoleons. Give me the nappy boys. And let's start adding some infantry brigades. I don't really want Jackson to be in charge of infantry brigade. Uh, we will buy instead a Trimble fellow. Let's go for another Mississippi. Again, go for someone nice and cheap like Mr. Root early on. Give me Lorenz. Can I afford this just about? Keep going for the Mississippis for now. Get some artillery pieces. What artillery pieces do I have? I've got 13 of these, so we'll take 13 of these. There we are. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, Jackson, no! You're far more important to me than that. Jackson, you're going to be my core commander. And we'll go for Army Org again. Maybe I'll add a cavalry, cavalry unit for this as well. But for now, we got to build. What here? I mean, we got Spring, we got Springfield, I guess, but Springfield's a poo. 
Spring falls off of poo boys. I could go for two cannons, but no, this is good for now. We've got the manpower for it. This is a pretty good build for now. Um, what is cheap and what is painful? The six pound is what they've got. Damage 41. Damage 56. Damage 23. I want to go with what's cheap, not really with what is good yes, sir. early on. So, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, four, eight, twelve. Add another one. Okay, that's good. I think if I can get one more, I should be able to get that whopping number for those 20 divisions. All right, let's start deleting these saves. As long as we don't crash now, we should be fine. Bruh. So, our first battle... Oh, I don't like Ambush Convoy. Oh, I would do Ambush Convoy, even though I hate it. So, what have we got from winning Bulls Run? Minus 7.5% enemy army size. The Union Army is massing its army near our capital, Richmond. Certainly they are preparing to attack and threaten to destroy our new government prematurely. Our scouts report that an important supply convoy loaded with heavy ammunition and weapons is on its way to support the Yankee army. We need to ambush and seize those supplies. Two local cavalry units have already taken position to join the attack and your command. So this is one where you don't actually use your own troops. You use a load of cavalry troops, uh, I believe. Oh no, that's wrong. Uh, and you've got to YOLO capture some supply wagons. It can either go very well or very badly. Uh, it's not a fun level. It involves a literal YOLO rush to capture the convoy. Uh, and then a, then a YOLO retreat. That it, 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 it's insanity. So the Union is massing its army near the capital. Yes, 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 yes. Blah, 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 blah. Long story short. Convoy coming down this road. Enemy reinforcements coming from the west. No, from the east and the north. If you take too long, you get surrounded and clapped. Uh, if you don't form a defensive line, you get surrounded and clapped. If a YOLO cavalry captures that one, of, one of their logistics, uh, you get YOLO clapped. It's um, really just a culmination of getting clapped. So you move everyone as close to the front as possible. No joke, no cap, as they like to call it. Start the battle. And run. Run, 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 run. It's this is not a high IQ battle. You're not going to see a masterwork of um, intelligent decision making here. Of course, if they do escape, your cavalry could just get clapped. Come on. I hate this battle. I hate it. 
It's such a meme battle. Come on. And now you run away. You, you run away. Now you run away. Now you run away. Everyone runs away. I've I've played Shiloh and I know how to cheese that bad boy. I I I know the correct cheesing mechanism for for Shiloh. But it again is a slog. It's a painful slog. The trick to Shiloh, uh, I'll tell you when, once I do Shiloh. I'll tell you. But there's a cheesy way of doing Shiloh. Run! Run! Everybody run! Run away! Run! Run! We're going to do some bushwhacking now. Why are you out in the open, Mr. Cannon? Come on, Cannon. Run away. I didn't order that, I swear. You're really on a tight time frame for this level. It's, it's disgusting because if if I'd waited for a little bit longer, then I'd just been overrun. Uh, prisoners, chill out. Have fun. Don't worry, the uh, Confederacy are really, really uh, kind to their prisoners. That's, um, that's not made up. Oh, to be fair, it wasn't really a cruelty thing. It's just a lack of resources. But the uh, prison camps and the Confederacy was, uh, weren't very good. But then again, the Union ones weren't particularly good either, so... Swings and roundabouts, really. And now we do nothing. <laughs> the pain is over. One of those levels that can be very that that you have to restart if you don't get the first part right. If and it's very RNG. If, if the convoy, if if the uh, supply wagons are really being cruel to you, they could like immediately run away to the bottom right of the map or the bottom or the top right of the map. And if you take too long to get them, then the reinforcements come and your troops end up getting surrounded. It's just not a pleasant sight. Fortunately, we're still on the sort of peak level, so the AI isn't really attacking us yet because they haven't got the number advantage. But what our aim here is not to do damage, but to conserve our troop strength for now. Which we've more or less done. I don't think we took too many casualties in this battle. This is why I don't like this level, because it's not... A large battle. It's not an interesting battle. The, the the best way to play in this battle is 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 a YOLO. It's not really a tactically demanding or intelligent decision making level.
still, it's got a nice flow to it of the push and the pull. Or more like the push and the, and the run. Three, two, one. Done. Glorious victory. How many casualties? 158. Can't complain. I probably actually got more troops back from that battle. Yes, I did. From the prisoners of war than I did from actually losing it. Nice. Oh god, don't give me 2,000 troops. Give me one troop. Give me one. Is this going to cost me any money? Yeah, I'm not going to pay you then. Nice. I like battles where I don't have to spend hours rebuilding my army. Okay. And how much money do we have? Plenty of money. So next thing is to go down army org again. Apply. So we can recruit the next pile of cannon fodder. I mean, loyal soldiers. Give me a cult. Yeah, give me 200 cult. cult. Give me 200 culty boys. 250 culty boys. And then let's give me a load of infantry. What guns? What guns? What guns? Springfields, no thanks. Surely a couple of you guys have got some good guns. Lorenzes, 800 Lorenz, it's not worth it. I'll be brutally honest with you, it's not worth it. 1,100 Enfields, yeah, that's fine. I can get away with that. Hmm. 900 I mean, maybe maybe some of these bad boys uh, maybe not because I can't get a thousand of them so no, the answer is no what the range of the palmettos damage 18 effective range uh, we'll just go to Springfields then I crack out 1500 Springfields I don't like Springfields but hey ho And a few more of these. Yeah, the next step will be artillery. Oh yeah, I can upgrade my artillery, can't I? I've got the money for it, so... Uh, artillery... Oh. Yes, sir. Mm, six pounder? Uh, what reserve do I have? I can go for howitzers. I'll get some more artillery next. We'll get some more artillery next. Um... Six pounder, six pounder. I will change that to a howitzer. We are currently regrouping our forces after the Battle of Ambush Convoy and seeking opportunity to counterattack. Long story short, they're getting more troops. Uh, next. Stay alert. General Johnston established his base at Corinth, Mississippi in order to reorganize our western forces. We soon expect Yankee offensives into Tennessee and we must be ready. Oh, I need to move my chair up. Mm. Corinth is a major railroad junction and a strategic supply position that you've been assigned. To, uh, blah, blah, to guard one of our supply lines, visit vital points, blah blah blah. It's a defense mission, I think. Oh yeah, we can use our points on the top right. We can buy more eight pound Napoleons. Oh. Worth it. Worth. Worth. Twelve pound Napoleons? Yeah, we'll buy all of it, why not? I can I can win this, so it's not the end of the world. Oh do I do do I do get a penalty to morale now? Uh, potentially not the best idea I've done, but oh well. Try not to panic, we'll be fine. Chains these. So these are the most experienced boys. They've got Mississippis. I can live with Mississippis. Uh, you've got a Mississippi. You need. Uh, you've got a Lorenz. You've got a Mississippi. You've got an Enfield. Uh, we'll change that to a Lorenz.
Give me a Lorenz. And where's my H&Ms? M&Gs. Yes, sir. Nice. Good. We'll be fine. Don't panic. We'll be fine. I haven't screwed myself over. This is an interesting defence level. I remember it now. So General Johnson, blah, blah, blah. Trenches are major railroad junction, blah, blah, blah. You've been assigned to guard one of our supply points. Yep, don't panic. Easy. Easy clap. Army has established a base at Corinth. Yes, I know this. Cavalry is not needed for this battle. Right click it. Uh, I could do with another cannon. To put another cannon in. And then we'll move our troops up like so. Oop. Oop. Yeah, that works. That works. Trick to this level is to use the forests. If you use the forests, you'll be fine. Move up Mr. Mildly, move up the money, and we can chill. Ninety hundred percent camo. 92% I can live with that. Cannons there. Baldi's chilling. And now we do nothing. Until our reinforcements turn up. Why did you turn, you lunatic? Because I didn't tell you to hold, that's why. And there you are. And that's more or less their cavalry done for now, I don't have to worry about them anymore. It's just these boys up north I gotta be a little bit worried about. Oh look, it's a YOLO charge. Come on, cannons, 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 cannons. Gimme give, give me what I want. Gimme what I want. Route, 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 route. You gave me garbage. I'm truth, I'm pretty sure my guys are about to route. We've got a charge down here? No, we're fine. Give me a cannon, give me a cannon. Rout, 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 rout. There we are, that's what we want to see.
Just shoot in the back of my own troops. It's not the end of the world. Don't worry about it. Pretty, pretty common tactic. Some fat boys. We've got pretty good cover, so we should be fine. Right, back to five speed. Their pretty much their charges are pretty much no longer a problem for me. So, may want to start turning back the way we came. Should be fine. I think just a bit of a pounding, that's all it is. I, is there a reason why you run away all the time? Oh, I hate skirmishes. They take too much micro. Why is there a cavalry unit going over here? Why am I flanked? My troops dying. This was not according to the plan. Finally. Oh, wonderful. Cavalry. When I think reinforcements, I think cavalry. Well, actually, that normally you, you talk about the cavalry coming to save you, don't you? So, um, yes, that's correct. The cavalry should be leading the way. What? My cavalry should be winning this. Their cavalry is winning this. My cavalry is getting clapped. My cavalry is getting clapped. You are garbage. I hate you. I truly hate you. I know. I'm cross. I know. I need to not do this. But the thing is... I need to move the troops around so I can get as much fire onto these guys as possible. I mean, now that this position is more secure, we can sort of not have to worry about it anymore, but... 
we can start turning to face the artillery again, but... I didn't really have much of a choice earlier because they had, a, had such larger numbers. I was hoping that the trees would be sort of my cover, you see, and that would reduce the damage I took. But we're good now. We can just chase them down. These guys will take cover. That cavalry will literally die. Don't do this to me. <laughs> Don't take my supply wagon. It's the only thing I have. Luckily, these guys are pretty well equipped, so there's nothing in the world. We can trade volleys for a little bit. Can we trade volleys? I hate these trees as well. Go for it, I believe. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. There we are. And then you turn the you to this bad boy, I turn over here. Uh, we continue to flanking, and we should be good. Not, this was not worth the push. Uh, I'll be honest. Taking far too many casualties doing this. Run away! Run away! Run away! Run away! Turn around and run away. I mean, it's not awful casualties. You can sell on the bottom left, but I don't really want equal casualties on, on a lot of my units. What I need is ridiculous sort of casualty ratios. in my favour. Finish. Yeah, you see the casualty losses. This I it's too even. I can't really allow that to happen. A couple of rescued weapons, a couple of captured weapons. So let's start replenning. One thousand five hundred. 
Why not? One five, one five, one five. Let's give these guys a bit more artillery. So the howitzers are pretty good, you say? Okay, we'll give the howitzers a go. Uh, I can't afford it. I suppose we're going down to six then. Six howitzers. Uh, yeah, have one of these bad boys. Manpower's fine, and this is fine as well. I can cheese this. Watch me cheese this. Oh. Yes. Cheese successful. One thousand five hundred. Works good enough. Palmetto's a poo. Anyone who uses a palmetto is cringe. You are cringe if you use a palmetto. And we'll go with one more. And then the rest will be cannons. This will be our cannon troop for this. Lorenz, I can get away with a Lorenz. Alright, cannons, artillery. What have we got? Howitzers, I'll take 12 of those because we've got 12 captured howitzers. And we will take 10 of these because we've captured 10 of these. Good. A nice strong force for the next coming battle. But we haven't created a new core yet, which we probably should do. It's okay, I prefer short range over um, over long range. I treat my cannons like shotguns. Cannons are my shotguns in this game. I generally use them for mass offensives, massive casualties, pain and suffering, that sort of thing. One, two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. There we go. A strong core for the next battle. Uh, we'll make a new core while we're here. And we'll just equip these guys with our captured Springfields. I don't really want to waste too much money on equipping these guys. Have a cavalry unit and a cannon. That's so expensive though. Cavalry's so expensive. Look at that. Look how expensive cavalry is. Cavalry's poo. Let's go for the palmettos. And we'll leave it at that. Oh yeah, I can upgrade you. What do you want? XP plus 10%. Speed plus five percent, passive all. Ammo plus twenty percent. Ammo is good. Ammo is better. Blah blah blah. I need help. We're giving you thirteen thousand two hundred more than men. Okay, time for history hour, boys. In a minute. Well, let me just save the game. Mm, I probably should have gone for trainer or tactics. I regret that, but hey, oh, it's too late now. No morale effect. That's fine. I'd like to live with that. So, Shiloh. Because we won the two previous battles, they will have minus 5% army size and minus 10% enemy infantry quality or equipment quality. So, Major General Ulysses S. Grant moved down his army via the Tennessee River and disembarked at Pittsburgh Landing. Grant is expecting Major General Don Carlo, Carlo Buell to join him of the Army of the Ohio for an attack on Corinth, 22 miles inland. Uh, Confederate General Albert S. Johnston was working feverishly or feverishly to incorporate the incoming regiments of the fresh troops into a fully mobilised Army of the Mississippi. Johnston plans to execute a surprise attack before the two armies meet. You are going to lead the attack with your forces consisting of the first attack wave. 
and then we have to read the thing on the left, and then we can go through history hour. So Major General Ulysses S. Grant has transported his army of the Tennessee to Pittsburgh Landing, located at the west bank of the Tennessee River. Grant is expecting Major John blah 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 to join him tomorrow with the Army of the Ohio. Together they will advance to Corinth 22 miles southwest, deep into Confederate territory. The Union Army is scattered into multiple encampments south of the Pittsburgh Landing, unaware that we are going to execute a surprise attack at dawn. Our goal is to defeat and destroy Grant's army before Carlos Buell arrives. You will lead the attack at the Union right flank, and you will be in the General in command of 2nd Corps of the General Bragg and Reserve Corps of General Breckenridge that will assault the far left flank. So, history hour. Shenandoah is one of those other, is sort of like the Bulls Run but for the Western Theatre. But it's in but in reverse. Initially, the Confederates do a really surprising surprise attack overrun a few camps and cause the Union Army to do mass retreats back towards their original landing points up over here. Uh, but thankfully due to some units uh, creating some strong defensive positions such as the Hornet's Nest in this position, they were able to delay long enough for reinforcements to come down and to solidify their positions, forcing the Confederates to withdraw from their offensive and eventually holding the land and calling it a victory. Um, well, eventually they moved off it and the Unions eventually moved up. So it's a bit in reverse because after the after the very successful Confederate attack, they eventually do get bogged down and slowed down and are unable to push any further forward. Uh, unfortunately, they took too long to overrun the enemy positions or the Union positions at the Pittsburgh landings. If they had perhaps done it a bit sooner and were able to push up a bit faster, then they could have potentially wiped out Grant's troops before, they, before Grant was reinforced. Um, we call it, it's sort of like balls run in reverse because, of course, um, the Confederates do extremely well in, in, at the start in this battle, whereas the Union does extremely well at balls run, uh, and then it goes horribly wrong the next stage of the battle. Um, again, it's a, just a normal case of a bit of chaos. Uh, because unfortunately, uh, again, because of the nature of the combat and there's no things, nothing like radio and things like that, it really was a very chaotic, uh, a bit of warfare. A lot of the Western Front is chaotic because of the many, many forests and hills and so on and so forth. Um, it's an interesting battle because, of course, you don't see many big Western Front battles and it's the first time you do sort of see Grant. Um, but from a gameplay perspective, you're really supposed to ignore the uh, the historical outcome uh, and you're not really supposed to hold around the hornet's nest. We'll go into a bit more detail about this, but um, as the battle goes, it's another big draw where uh, neither side really achieves anything of great note, but unfortunately the Confederates can't really get away with draws and on the tactical level they can't really get a, they can't afford draws because of their lack of manpower and general um, size compared to the Union or the, or the North and so every single time you really call it a draw you should perhaps see it in the long term as another part of the Confederate defeat. Um, it's a common thing for the Confederacy, unfortunately, throughout this uh, throughout the war. They uh, achieve a lot of uh, tactical victories and do cause a lot of Union chaos, but they're never able to really finalise the killing blow uh, and knock out Union armies. And that lack of decisive battle means that really the Unions can withdraw. It works both ways. Uh, the Union also does the same after Gettysburg and so on and so forth. But um, it's just another common theme in this battle where you have these big battles and then enough, and then but no one really delivers a crushing blow. In this case, the Confederacy fails to deliver the crushing blow and then the Union reinforces and then another battle will be the opposite way around. Anyway, we have our core of 20 divisions and we will begin. So here is Pittsburgh Landing. Grant has transported his army via the Tennessee River to this location, Pittsburgh Landing, and is preferred, prepared to advance further south. We are going to attack them at dawn when they will at least expect us. Our corps will arrive from the southwest. The Yankees are encamped and have most of their troops here. If we attack swiftly, we may catch them completely unguarded and capture their supplies. A slight ridge at the Shiloh Church creates a formidable natural defence and should be seized to secure our left flank. On the right, we have to overcome the hilly terrain and then we can safely proceed to the north. 
The last Union defence is expected here at Pittsburgh Landing. Watch for enemy gunboats on the Tennessee River that can bombard from the long distance. Sir, we're advancing. Advance over here. There you go. So, although I like cannons, because the nature of the combat is going to be very rapid advance, I don't think cannons are going to be any use to me. And so we're going to move up and spawn another infantry unit. You aim here. Bop, 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 bop. So the aim here is, 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 is very much a timed sort of battle. You want to be advancing as fast as you can on each sector, and as far as you can on each sector, so when you get to the final rush for Pittsburgh Landing, you can get there before the Union Army has chances to reinforce the defensive positions. Uh, so, without further ado, save the game. Shiloh. Let's go. And we need to get pushed beyond this capture point. We can't hold this capture point. We have to push beyond it. Unfortunately, we aren't going to run because this is going to be a waste of condition. Because this is a slog match. You want to really preserve your troops' condition for as long as you can. Yeah, if they do get on those, if they do get on those trenches before. I can take them, then you, you, we will need the cannon. But the idea with this logic is we can get and hold those positions before the enemy has a chance to actually enforce those trench lines. I don't want to, I want to push the Union troops eastwards, I don't want to push them northwards. The idea is that if the Union troops are not moving that way, they can't move into the main part of Pittsburgh Landing. So I'm not going to chase that too much. Where's my cavalry? That's there. Where's my cannons? Cannons, where's my cavalry? Oh, it's the reinforcements. I'm just going to keep pushing forward as much as I can. I don't care if I push them into the, the marshlands. The idea is to cut them off from their lines of communication. As it was pronounced. Uh, these guys are just going to have to walk. It's not worth running them. Good. So far, so good. These guys, I'm just going to order you all the way up here. 
That way I know you'll be going the way I want you to. Unfortunately, my troops are getting too tired now. It's become a slog. To be expected, but these are very well equipped troops, so I'm not going to be too worried. These guys will hold the left. Cavalry will move forward. Let's keep pushing forward. Like so. There we are. A pretty healthy advance on that right on that left flank. Can't complain. I think we did a pretty good job advancing that much on the left. But now our next target will be our right flank. Our last cause now arriving to attack the Union Center and rear. So I immediately save the game. Shiloh 2. And the idea here is just a wide push on this front. But these troops aren't our own, so we can afford to dis ob obliterate these troops. These troops are entirely disposable. All you have to do is kill that troop. And there we are. Yeah, so if you have got troops on like the far edges of the map, sometimes your troops can be lost or carried over to the next front. But yeah, there's a few glitches on this uh, on this bat on this on this game, which could really screw you up if you weren't uh, if you were unlucky. There's our reserve core moving up on the right, and that will secure our right flank for us. You don't have to be too fast about this either. We've got time. 
that the right flank you can't really do a YOLO rush on the right unfortunately because of the nature of the terrain. Last units. I'm trying to conserve my troops' energy right now. There's my cavalry. Counter charge. Oh, you're too far back to counter charge. I do need to move the cannons up. Up, 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 up. No more running. No more running. No more running. This is a no running only zone. Cannon, cannon, cannon. Fine, fine, fine. No real push from that flank. Units of resistance stronger than expected. Their troops are preparing for a counterattack and must hold Shiloh Church to keep their right flank under pressure. Should be okay. If you want to do a counter-attack, then more than three to do so. This is the thing here, you see, they're so entrenched, it's very difficult to push them off. You have to wear them out slowly, otherwise it's not going to work. Where's my cannons? General Grant spotted. He's come to see his army being destroyed. I don't think that's true. Do it. Commit everything. Commit, commit, commit. If they counter <laughs> counter charge, leave these guys here as a reserve. The ones that got a bit damaged. Good. This is really good. We are turning them away from Pittsburgh landing.
I'm just send one of the boys back to hold this. If they really want to do this game. Kind of stuck a bit of a pounding there. Good. Blue coats establishing a second barrier defense. We haven't even taken the right flank yet because these guys are taking too long. Run! going very well on the left, not going very well on the right because we haven't even achieved our main objective yet. Like we have like we haven't achieved a right flank taken yet. Good. Move these guys forward. Good. Move these guys forward. Move these guys forward. Move, move, move. Run. Preferably the way I want you to as well. You know it's bad when the cannons are further forward in infantry. It's a new tactic, watch. It's, it's not a new tactic, the, ca the cannons are dead. It's a new tactic, it's a new tactic. It's, I'm a genius, I'm a strategic genius. A tactical genius. I take back everything I said. I'm a tactical genius. Finally, what's left of our motley band of potatoes has moved forward. Good. We should be in a position to move around.
Yeah. The enemy. They're retreating, which I do not like. Oh god, give me that supply wagon. Oh, they are retreating. I don't like that. Crush that position, please. It should be enough to open up a path to where I need to be. Yeah, it should be fun. General Grant establishing his last line of defence at Pittsburgh Landing. Don't hesitate, attack. So this is the part where we take all our troops and we run. Run, 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 run. This is the part where everyone runs. The Pittsburgh Landing. And you don't let anyone retreat. You just do a mass assault. No one retreats. No one runs away. Everything else does not matter now. The only thing that matters is getting Pittsburgh landing before they do.
Okay. Now, the idea here is to achieve an absolutely catastrophic encirclement. we can take out that cannon. Hmm. Just push them over here. first patch of casualties or prisoners. The trick is to catch them just as they're leaving the hornet's nest and if you've set this up just right you can start getting masses of uh, prisoners. Move all these guys up. Move everything up. That was my left flank. Could be worse. We could start retreating these guys back. And they've done their job. They've opened up a route to Pittsburgh Landing. Doesn't look too pretty, but um, I assure you this is working well. Because these aren't my troops anyway, so they're pretty disposable. The idea is that in this chaos, I get loads of surrenders. And that feeds my army for the next 
half the campaign. There we are, next casualty, next surrenderer. Next surrenderer. And another one. And another one. I think they will send up reinforcements soon, so I have to be a bit careful. Yeah, there's a reinforcements coming in now. Oh. We may have to slow this down a little bit to see what's going on. I need to move these <laughs> the prisoners out of my territory. I can't see what's going on. There we are. So this is the historical part where the enemy sort of get some reinforcements coming in, but um, the most of the reinforcements came the next day. If I'm honest. Oh, I didn't really have much of an impact until the next day, and by that time the war had more or less been over. So it's one of those battles that really speed is of the essence because you can see here if the enemy does is, is able to retreat um, they will form a massive defensive line of trenches uh, and you will throw your troops in to try and push them off and you will not push them off or if you will succeed in pushing them off but then the enemy counterattack will effectively counterattack and knock you off the position. So very, uh, very important one about not being bogged down and slowly moving around the hard points. If you can do that, then you're pretty good. If you can't, then um, you are going to struggle on this level. In my case, because I built my army pretty well, this was not too demanding a level for me. Also, I got very lucky by pushing the enemy off. If you can push that regiment off and cut the road to Pittsburgh Landing, you effectively win the level. So, let's take a look. 
uh, Braxton Bragg, myself, and of course John Vekeridge versus Ulysses Grant. They had the strength of 38,531 men to my 42,102. Um, they had 1,700 1, cav to my 1,500, and they had 127 guns to my 1,140. The casualties were 24,000, so if we break down 38,000 as 10%, it's 3,800 times by 5, uh, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 15,000, let's round up to 4,000, about 20,000, so 50%, they lost about, so about 50% of the army. So if it was 40,000, yeah, they lost about 50% of their army. Uh, I lost, um, so half of 42 is 20, um, 26,000, is that right? 40, 50, no, 21,000, 21,000. So 10% um, is 4,200. So I lost about uh, 4,200, half of that is 2,100, 6,300. So about 15% of my army. So this is the sort of casualty figures you want. Um, where the army is more or less annihilated and you are more or less intact. Uh, fortunately, this is very lucky for me because, again, it's, it is a little bit RNG in these battles. The fact I was able to separate the Shiloh Church Union forces from the Pittsburgh landing route allowed me to quickly move troops in and to turn the Union flank. And that, of course, allowed me to encircle and wipe out a significant portion of the Union forces. And at that stage, I was pretty well established, and I could, of course, defend against the Union counterattack. This battle, of course, can go very badly wrong uh, if you delay or get held up or you take too many casualties, because then the Union can withdraw unmolested, set up in their defensive entrenchment lines, the reinforcements can come in, uh, and by the time you're able to break through, it's already too late, and the next day carries over. Uh, it's actually a two-day battle. Uh, but to get the draw, you need to hold Spainfield and effectively sort of draw from Pittsburgh Landing. Um, whereas for victory, you need to take Pittsburgh Landing and lose less than 75% of your army, which we did. In terms of units, we don't really worry about that. Uh, we got a couple of deceased officers, Ransom, Hardin and Martin, but that's about it. And our goods, we have got captured 2,070, oh, it's 4,200 uh, Springfields and... Some skirmish or weapons, but nothing we really use. So, we get Bedford Forest as a cavalry commander, we get Albert Johnson as a potential commander, Army Org plus one, and we get 1,000 extra prisoners from our 4,000 casualties, uh, or prisoners of war. Uh, of course, we now have to rebuild our army. Uh, let's take a look to see what troops I can bring for the next battle. So, if we take a look at Gaines Mill, if I save, Save for the south camp. Take a look at what's at Gaines Mill. So I can send one, two, I can send 30 and 25. So a full core is 40, uh, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So I need about three cores worth of troops for this battle. So if I go back to the camp. and rebuild our army as cheaply as possible. We'll try and build three cores for this battle. I'm not going to bother Ooh. Is it worth it? What captured guns have I got? Give him a sharps model. It's 12,000, I can afford that. Uh, let's go with speed. Get a couple of these cannons. Upgrade. Upgrade.
Give me some logistics. These guys can give me cannons. Oh, these cannons are expensive though. I've got to be careful. We'll come back to the cannons in a second. And upgrade these bad boys. Uh, pretty hefty casualties on this front, unfortunately. But I should still be able to build a pretty healthy core next. Just give me cheap commanders, I'll upgrade them when I need to. So we need to build ourselves another core. Let's give these guys an artillery. Uh, what have we got captured? We'll get some howitzers. And another infantry core. What sort of captured equipment do we have? We've got some springfields. We'll take the springfields. And we'll move on to the next one. Okay, infantry. Springfield. Infantry. Springfield. Infantry, Springfield. And a cannon. Any captured cannons? I've got two howitzers for that one. Uh, let's go with the 12-pound Napoleon. I know what I get with a 12-pounder. Um, what sort of skirmisher guns do I have captured? Nothing I really want. What do I want to buy? Nothing really either. Mm. Start getting some Mississippis. Sir, yes, sir. Uh, start upgrading our troops on, on the north with Mississippis. So I got Springfield to we'll give these guys a Mississippi. Give these guys a Mississippi. Give these guys um I need to upgrade this, I don't really want to, but so few cannons for that. So our limiting factors now is income and manpower. So we should pull our points into politics. Because that will give us more inventory and more manpower. Speed, always give me speed. logistics for this guy speed because speed allows me to overrun enemy infantry positions and who's my commander for you oh i like Braxton and brag but alas i cannot afford you uh we'll give these guys some more ammunition some more supplies as well all together not a bad amount of troops um but we see our manpower is our limiting issue so uh, the next couple of battles, we'll be having to conserve our manpower and conserve our income. So hopefully we can, of course, get enough supplies to um, really overrun in this next battle. Anyway, what time is it? Is it time for bed yet? Yeah. Uh, it's now eight o'clock, so I'll tell you what we will do. We will play these ones and then prepare for uh, Gaines and Mill 
tomorrow. Uh, so we'll just do these minor battles first. So let's first do Port Republic, uh, which is the most easiest one. Which one's a defensive one? Uh, we'll just do the first Winchester, why not? So, we've decided to launch an offensive operations on the Union forces in the Shenandoah Valley, preventing them from reinforcing the offensive against Richmond. Misuse a bold strategy by employing audacity and rapid and predictable movements on the whole valley. Therefore, you'll use a small flexible force. The rest of your army will take positions at the outskirts of our capital. The Union commander of the Department of Shenandoah, M.G. Nathan T. Banks, is attempting to reorganise his army at Winchester and defend the town. Move swiftly and attack the Union force. If we win, we get 4,600 men and 69,000. If we draw, we get 3,500 men. And if we lose, we get 23,000 men, which we can't really afford to do. We can't really afford to lose. But... Our numbers are significant, our equipment should be better, uh, and so I'm not too worried about this battle. It seems the Federals decided to give a, ba a battle and deployed around the town of Winchester. Our scouts reported General P Banks has no more than four brigades supported by artillery and light. You have your disposal significant force to crush the enemy. The enemy is outnumbered, so we need to prevail on the battlefield. Bring us victory and at least inflict 30% more casualties. So this is an interesting one because you don't really want to attack from the front. You want to actually flank around on the side like so and attack that way. Uh, our cavalry is something we don't actually generally use that much. Uh, I would prefer to bring cannons to the battle. So cannon one. Uh, cannon's too small. That's a good cannon. That's a healthy cannon. That's a garbage cannon. That's a good cannon. So we'll move our troops over on the right or on the left with the intention of flanking around the enemy like so. Up, up, up. And all we do is flank around like this. Take some time, but you don't attack from the north and you don't attack from the west. You just go around enemy positions. But a lot of these boys should be equipped with some of the better weapons. So we should be good. Oh, hey, yo. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. It's lost a hundred troops now. Oh, wait, oh, I just been being ambushed. I've been ambushed. Not the end of the world, mind you, but still a bit of a nuisance. Move these cannons up.
Lovely. Mm, let's keep moving the cannons up. Got these guys move forward. Shall we move these guys up to deal with this? Now we're in the forest, so we should be in a pretty solid spot. Okay. Uh, hopefully not too costly a battle, but I think it is actually pretty costly. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's costly. Costlier than I hoped it would be. On the fire? You should have fired, old boy. That's your own fault. You should have fired there. I have no sympathy for you. We can micro this. Mm, finish the battle. Finish the battle. There's too many casualties for that. Yeah, even that casualty figure is not particularly impressive. I needed more manpower, that's a shame. More politics, thank you. Yes, sir.
How much is a Mississippi? Is that going to screw me up? No, that's fine then. Where's my Enfields? That's fine, that works. Um, guns, equipment, let's try, let's see, let's see, let's see. Add another infantry. What have we got to trade with? We've got Springfields, wonderful. Fine, if you got Capture Springfields, use Capture Springfields. One Springfield. Two Springfield. Three Springfield and some cannons. Give me five of these bad boys. I've almost got two cores, but that's not, not, not going to be enough. I'm going to need more cores than that, if I'm honest. What I need right now is more manpower. I need more cannon fodder. Mm, cross keys or Port Republic. Let's do Port Republic. Operations throughout the valley have forced the Federals to mobilize a significant force within the area, delaying the offensive plans against our capital. A second Union column under General Shields is marching to Port Republic. We must attack and destroy the Union force. This will be the last battle in the area. Defeat the Federals to force their retreat through from the valley. Then you'll be free to move your forces and support the defense of Richmond. 5,300 more men, which is nice, and 4 plus 4 to my military prestige, which should hopefully allow me to recruit more men if we can pull it off. Okay, let's start bad boy. The Yankee Brigade has been spotted taking positions in the area. This is another one of those flanking ones rather than an actual sort of micro one. You just flank on the left and you're pretty good to go. It's not a challenging level, so you just flank here, push over, and you win. Let's take two of these bad boys, start the battle, and move them over here. This is not a rocket science level. This is a chill level. Don't worry about the cannons. Nothing to see here. Cannons are fake news. Fake news. No such thing as cannons. Show me a cannon. You can't. Fake news. Reinforcements arrive. And then I'm going to need to kill this rather quickly. Move these troops up this way. Oh, oh. Let's 
correct, the Union has secured the hill. We don't worry about it because they won't be securing it for long. Where's my cavalry gone? Alright, oh, they're lurking. That's what they're doing, they're lurking. Oh. This is a good one to get easy equipment, so don't worry about it too much. Just flank and farm. Easy clamp. I can't remember if they get reinforcements over here, so I'm not going to push this. Just yet. Oh, yeah, they do. There we are. So let's plonk this guy down here, plonk this guy here. That's not him. Oh, you need to get rid of the skirmishes, don't you? Oop. Oop. Push, push, push. Push, push, and down here. Let's keep pushing it. Don't let them retreat. Let's keep going. And that should be our prisoners. That's one prisoner anyway. You're more than happy to cross that, or more than happy for you to cross that at all. Let's keep chasing it. The trick here is if you keep chasing it, then they can't reform and blast you. But if you move away for a second or forget these guys exist, you're in for a, a painful ride.
Especially if Bedford Forest decides to do something as stupid as that. Not really what I want you to do, but whatever. I think my guy's are actually going to die if I'm not careful. It's just very frustrating having to chase these guys around. This guy over here, move this guy over here. That's the cannons dealt with. That's fine, we can farm them there. Uh, send these guys back. Oh, run away, run away. Good, these guys are dead. We can move over here now. Uh. And we can finally kill these units on the right. Sadly, the cavalry were pretty useless. Really, cavalry is only for capturing supply wagons and mopping up once in a while. Unless you've got particularly high level cavalry, they're not mm, very useful. Die! Christian, <gasps> he, 
I'm so used to these battles that this is not the best one though, I have to admit. This is not this is a bit of a rush job. I can tell normally my uh, game my, my gameplay starts to dip when I'm, when I'm rushed. The thing is you can't just like run crush them because uh, they'll just flee from the from the center of the map, so hey ho. So Infantry strength for the enemy was 11,000, uh, our infantry strength was 11,000, they lost 8,400, I lost 2,500, so in terms of casualties, pretty good. Uh, goods captured, some sharps, rifles, and some Mississippis, oh, rescued some Mississippis, not enough to really uh, make me a happy boy, but hey-ho. So we go back to 1,500. I think we'll still have enough to increase our capacity of troops, so it's not the end of the world. I hate Cav. I hate Cav. I'm going for large armies rather than trained armies. So that's why I'm constantly using recruits, because I'd rather just have a slow, gradual gain of experience throughout the battles rather than over-invest on equipment. Can I upgrade you? Yes, I can. How's it, how much is it going to cost me? Not enough. It's fine. I can afford that. But anything else I can afford to buy? Oh, Napoleons. Switch these to my lovely Napoleons. And we need more infantry. We're running out of infantry, which is a problem. Springfield, Mississippi. We can afford Lorenz rifles. Oh, yes, Though I would prefer it if we upgraded some of our other troops first. So these guys are Mississippi, these guys have got Lorenzes. Mississippi, Mississippi, Springfield. So let's change this for Lorenz. Good weapon, good weapon, good weapon. Good, this is a very well equipped unit. I'll change this for Lorenz. Uh, we can't, we can't afford it. Uh, we can buy Lee Enfield though. Lee Enfield. I uh, can't buy another Lee Enfield. And we can't buy another Springfield. Uh, let's buy a Palmetto then. And then these guys will just equip with. Our reserves. Nice. So, we have one battle left, and we still are, we don't have enough um, cores. We need more manpower. So this will give me a plus 20% to gold and recruits, whereas the, whereas the medicine will give me a plus 6% restored. Well, obviously 20% recruits is better, so we'll go over here. And our next battle is to cross keys. So the Union Army keeps sending more troops to deal with our moves through the Shenandoah Valley. A signal station on a Mason Newton monitoring Union progress reported two Union co columns converging on your position under the command of General Fremont. The army of General Fremont is marching on the Valley Pike. Advance your force at Cross Keys and stop him. I'm more than happy to do so. Nice, a defensive level means I can rack up kills without taking too much damage. Don't need to worry about that. I don't need cavalry for this, I just need cannons. Uh, what kind of cannon are you? You're crap, you're Napoleons, I'll take that. Uh, Napoleons, Napoleons, none of you are Napoleons, so I don't care. Uh, cavalry, I don't care about cavalry, give me infantry. 
Good. So this battle is a pretty conventional battle. Uh, you just set your troops up on the tree line and then the enemy will just bash against you. Uh, a pretty easy battle uh, as long as you've got the manpower for it and you've got the cannons for it. You can't really go far wrong. So let's run the boys in. Oh, I've got to move these troops up here first. Is it normally a wide flank? So, run. 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 Send the cannons up to point blank. Send the infantry along here. Send our Mr. Mildly over here and send our supplies to the center. These guys got range, uh, just about. These guys got range, just about. Hold, hold, cannon's good. A pretty easy battle. There's nothing much to say about this one. As long as you've been maintaining your army at this stage, it's just a little bit at micro. And worrying a little bit about this divot here, but as long as you've got the troops and the equipment, you can outshoot the enemy, so nothing to be too concerned about. Yeah, see the little divot, so I try and push over here. We have to we'll flank. A little bit of a push down south, but they won't be able to do any damage down there. And in fact, taking more casualties on this position than actually anticipated. This is not to be even looked at. And a little bit of retreat here. And a little bit of retreat there. Yeah, nothing to be concerned of. Trading shots, which isn't always a good thing. Oh. 
Oh god no. God no, good no. Oh wait. Like in terms of casualties we're doing an awful lot more but I'm just not happy with the amount of casualties I took from that sector. Send the cannon around and start firing on that. It's just not worth the trade, is it? Now we can just move over. Maybe send out some scouts. Maybe send out some scouty boys. I would love to get some of those cannons, if possible, before the battle ends. Oh, that's a shame. Still pretty good casualty figures, 3,400 to 8,300. Uh, acceptable casualty figures for that. Although it may not look it. Need a good commander for that fellow. Max and Bragg, you're in charge. Yes, sir. Not enough Mississippis. Uh, Springfields, yeah, these guys are fine then. Sir, yes, sir. Hmm. Yes, sir. Some great weapons, but unfortunately, it doesn't matter. I'm going to forward 2,000 more troops. Interesting. Everyone is fully equipped? Yes. Okay. Infantry, create division. Uh, I need to start selling stuff. 
Uh, there's no point selling any of this yet. It's not going to give me enough money. And then to create another one, I will need to sell some stuff. Uh, sell... The Sawnoffs. Sell the Cook's Brother guns. Uh, sell the Smith guns. Sell the Colts. Sell the Sharps. And I can't afford any more infantry. Interesting. So that gives me a core of 40,000 men. For Gaines Mill. Uh, let's take a look at this Gaines Mill before we end for the day. Start deleting all of this. Save over. It better be. Just in case. So I can get pretty close to the main number. I would prefer be able to the ability to send in reserves, but alas, I do not have that capability. Um, I'm guessing that we should still be able to break the enemy regardless. Although I wish my army was a little bit larger. Um, I wish I had three cores for this, but we will hopefully get to three cores by the next battle. Fingers crossed. Anyway, boys and girls, this is why I leave you. Uh, the video will go up uh, shortly after. Um, but we'll be continuing on this campaign because it's easy to do. The battles are quite interesting and it's quite enjoyable. It's nothing, I don't have to think too, um, too long term in terms of like the strategy in this. It's more tactical combat. Uh, I'm still waiting for these guys to release something else like this game. I mean, this game was amazing. I don't understand why they're not making another one of it yet. Come on, guys. I need another one of these bad boys. But until then, we'll be continuing on later. Uh, thank you all for watching, boys and girls. I will see you all later. Uh, and uh, have a good one. Adieu.